right, so who am I? Um, I am Jen Greenberg, so welcome to the call for Fit Family Network. Um, I am a two-time elite coach, hopefully three time for this year. Um, that's my husband and I up there on the right, and he is a huge part of my business and helps support me as I continue to grow and develop myself and the business and the team. And then that's me and my son down on the bottom. And um, I am either your upline sponsor, either I sponsored you into the coach or in, into the business, or I may be your upline diamond or star diamond coach. But what I really want you to know about me is that I have no entrepreneurial um, experience. I have no background in business or marketing, unless you consider telemarketing experience, which it definitely doesn't. Um, but really, I have zero reason to believe that I could have succeeded at this. On paper, there is nothing about me that you would look and say, you know what, she could build a business of 10,000 people making six figures. Um, there's nothing about me that would make you think that. But the one thing that I do have is that I am a doer. Um, when I found Beachbody and I found that this was the fit for me and I was passionate about it and I liked helping people, I decided to take action. And everything I learned, every webinar, every call, every Google document that I read, I took from it and I implemented. And that is a big difference between me and other people is that I was, I decided to go for it. I took action and I just started. Um, so, you know, I'm really passionate about helping people to build their business as well as helping people on their fitness journey. But I seriously, seriously love helping people on the business side. And I find it super exciting and fulfilling to help people with their business and to get them to start seeing results with their business like I have and to start seeing the changes and effects that it can have in your family. So my purpose for this call and in general as a part of your upline team is to help bridge that gap between information overload of tons of YouTube trainings and back office training and all this stuff and just kind of helping you to hone in on the trainings and resources that you need to actually start taking those steps to build your business. So on our agenda tonight, we're going to talk about your first steps as a coach, um, the three vital behaviors. We're going to talk about starting where you are, how to post and share about your journey, what to say, um, consistency, having the success mindset, and creating results from taking action. And I will try to keep this um, as short as possible. Um, like I said, I don't like to try and give information overload, but I just want to give you a sprinkle of all of those things. So let's start off by talking about um, things that you should share. Uh, now that you're a coach, what should you start talking about and when? So some people, it's like, you know, you get started, you get your challenge pack, and maybe you have some fitness goals that you want to hit and you use those as things, um, as obstacles of why you're not gonna start sharing your journey yet because you haven't achieved your fitness goals. But I want you to start sharing and just start taking action from where you are now. Um, if you just sit around and wait until you know everything there is to know, then you're gonna be waiting a long time. So I just want you to start now, just start doing something. Um, you know, you can miss out on valuable learning experiences. I'm not saying that it's always gonna go perfectly when you just start, you're gonna fumble over your words, you're gonna have conversations with friends and think like, oh my gosh, I just word vomited on them. I don't even know what I said about 21 day fix. And, but it's okay and you learn from that and you don't learn until you try. So that's why it's important to just start sharing now. Um, this, an example that has always been given to me 
has been about a restaurant. And like if you go out to a restaurant and it's something new that you just tried, you go, you had a great time, you had excellent service and you know, the waiter was awesome and super attentive and you know, you just had a great time. You would naturally go and tell your friends like, oh, you gotta try the new Mexican restaurant, the margaritas are awesome. You wouldn't wait until like you knew, like you had their menu memorized and you knew the name of every person that worked there and you knew their hours that they were open and you knew the phone number and address. Like you wouldn't care about that stuff. All you would care is about your actual personal experience that you had at the restaurant. So it's same thing with Beachbody. You should share your personal experience. It doesn't matter if you know every ingredient in Shakeology. It doesn't matter if you know the specifications for every program and which one is 30 days and which one is 90 days, which one is Tony and which one is Shanti. Those things you can find. It doesn't matter. Your experience is what is valuable and what you need to hone in on. So here's a couple of things that um, I like to use as ways to kind of talk about my experience and to kind of veer off of, like if you maybe don't know the correct answers, these have always been super helpful to me. So um, like you can say, all I know is that I've lost this many pounds doing 21 day fix. So if they're asking you like certain specifications about programs or whatever, you don't need to know why Autumn created the program. All I know is that I lost 20 pounds doing 21 day fix. Um, how many or what kind of protein is in Shakeology? Well, I don't really know. I just know that since I've been drinking it, I feel amazing. I have so much more energy. My cravings for chocolate have gone down. That's what matters, right? Like knowing the ingredients, you know, you may come across people that want to know certain exact things and you can pick that up. But for the most part, it's going to be your personal physical um, experience that you've had with the products. Um, as far as sharing about the business, people will ask you things about it. Uh, how does the compensation plan work? Uh, how does it, how do you make money? How do you do this? And basically, well, you know, I'm just kind of getting started, but I was living paycheck to paycheck. And while I'm not where my goal is, but I've got a little breathing room now. I'm making a little bit of side money and it's really helped in our finances. It's really helped having a little money left over at the end of the month. So those are just some things that you can say without having to know the exact answer. Okay, um, so this, I think this slide was supposed to come before that other one, but that's okay. Okay, so this is where your focus needs to be as you're getting started with your business. Um, and it's going to come down to your own personal fitness journey. And there is no way around it, I'm sorry, but it's just going to be a huge part of this if you want to take this business seriously. So you need to be focusing on your personal fitness. You need to have a before and after picture eventually. You need to have um, proof that you are, you know, doing this, that you are using the products. So you need to be focusing on your workout and Shakeology. You need to be focusing on having two people join you. And you need to focus on getting on the team calls every week and focusing on personal development at least 10 minutes a day or 10 pages. Um, like what I was saying earlier, resources are incredible. There's a million tools out there, a million YouTube videos, all of those things. But if you have not really learned and implemented these basic vital behaviors, then none of those extras are gonna do any good. There's no point in learning blogging and Instagram and how to use a like page and all of that if you don't have those core basic vital behaviors of your fitness journey, personal development, and getting on the call. So it's totally okay and normal to feel overwhelmed, but just take each thing one 
thing at a time. So, you know, if you are like me and have a messy house most of the time, sometimes, you know, you may come in and the kitchen has exploded and you don't know what happened in there, but you just have to take it one thing at a time. Let's just start with at least putting the milk back in the fridge and then maybe I'll put the dishes in the dishwasher and then I will pick up the Cheerios from the floor or maybe the dogs have already done that. But you know, just do it one step at a time. So you've already done your personal development for today. Okay, what's next? Let me get my workout done. Just do it one step at a time. Don't look at the whole entire task list and get overwhelmed. Just keep doing, take one step, one stroke if you're swimming, you know, you just gotta do it a little bit here and there. Okay, this was a little Facebook tip that I thought was super helpful, and it really helped me to kind of organize my Facebook. Um, a lot of us have are using Facebook to grow our business, so I just wanted to share this with you, and it's for Facebook groups. Um, you have probably gotten added into a bunch of groups, probably like the large team page, and then maybe a page for just your personally sponsored coach and then maybe a coach basics group and then a challenge group so you may have all these different groups and now you've got like all these notifications coming in and it's easy to get overwhelmed just with the notifications so um one thing that has helped me is by putting groups into my favorites so if you have um some groups that are you know important for you to check in every day you can go into the settings over where that little uh, circle thing is and there's a drop down box where you can add it to your favorites. And it shows up over on the left hand side of your Facebook page and so it takes it into a different section than all of your other groups. So you have your favorites groups and then you can organize those um, in a different order if you'd like. So you know maybe you have 10, <coughs> ten favorites you can put you know, the first five that you have to check in daily to and make those on the top. So if you just wanna go in order of groups as you're checking in, you know, that works too. So that was just a little tip and it really helps to not let those notifications pile up and distract you and overwhelm you. So I just thought that was super helpful and it's helped me a lot. So I just wanted to share that real quick. Okay. So back to posting, you will see on the top, there is a picture of hip hop abs uh, with, it says crazy sale, $140, includes Shakeology. That is do not post, like nobody wants to see that. It looks salesy, it looks informal, it looks, it's just, I would scroll right past that. Like I don't need somebody to sell me a program. But then underneath you see, um, well, I don't know if it's hard for you guys to see this, but it says, note to former self. Um, I'm proud of you for starting. All of this was worth it. Who cares about the pizza and candy? You are better because you took that first step. 59 weeks of trying. So that's an awesome post because it really, targets those people and makes it relatable to people that have tried and tried and tried. They've had 59 Mondays come and go where, you know, you're like, this is going to be the week where I really hit it hard and I follow my meal plan and I don't have any mess ups. And then uh, like by Wednesday, you have already messed up. You've already like had a cheat meal or you've fallen off track or you just feel defeated like oh this isn't worth it I'm never going to get to where I want to be and then sometime down the road you actually start seeing success um, so I just thought that post was cool because it would be awesome to like give a note to your former self and just to let that former self know that it's gonna work out in the end but it works because it shows personality it shows a healthy lifestyle. It shows, you know, why people should follow you. And it shares the story and that journey that you've been going through. So don't post pictures of the program like, oh, it's coming out in December. And, you know, those things, they just don't work. They make people feel icky. 
they like to see you. They like to see you, you know, sharing your story, your struggles, your triumphs, <coughs> those kind of things. Okay. So this is some more information about social media, some tips for how you should be sharing on Facebook. Um, keep it short. I know sometimes you'll see like a long post alert and I know a lot of us, it's like, it's in, I know for Mike, my husband for sure, as soon as he sees that, he like scrolls right by it. But um, sometimes there is a time and place for that. But for the most part, people have such a short attention span. So you really want to keep it short, get to the point, share what you want to share, and you've got to make that scroll stopping picture. So, you know, take a little more effort when you're doing your post workout selfies or you're taking a picture of your food. Take a little more thought and, you know, effort, I guess, into making sure there's some lighting and making sure that they're, you know, that it looks nice, that it looks like something you'd, you'd stop and look at. Um, there's a lot of different apps that can help you with, um, you know, adding pictures or adding words to your pictures and those kind of things. Um, I like PhotoFi and Font Candy and uh, Word Swag. So those are my three favorites. Um, so, okay, back to, back to this. Um, pick five categories. You don't want all of your posts to be about fitness and nutrition. That's gonna be boring to people that are not into fitness and nutrition. So you have to be posting about things that other people are gonna be interested in, things that your audience wants to know about and would follow you for those reasons. So it, whether it's tips about being a mom, um, you know, whatever your hobbies are, different arts, crafts, recipes, whatever it is that makes you, you. Um, you know, you should have about five different things that are kind of your normal go-to topics. And those are the things that you should be posting about. Only about 20% should be about fitness. So sometimes you just need to take a moment to look at your Facebook page and just kind of give a little analysis on your page and see like, am I posting about other things or is it just me and my Shakeology cup every day? Cause that's just, you know, not very exciting. So make sure that you're posting about different things. Um, go back and look at those last five posts. And this is something I still do, guys. Like, I do this all the time, and sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, like, nobody would even know that they could join a challenge group with me. Why would I expect them to know that when my last five posts don't say anything about it? How would I know anybody, or why would I expect anybody to know that they can join and be a coach on our team too when I haven't talked anything about the coaching opportunity? So you really have to go and take an honest look and take a, you know, a peek at what you're posting. Um, also, I know I said you've got to put effort into those pictures and your wording, but if you're having a crazy day and you just don't have time or your mind is in a million places, a meteoric post is better than no post at all. There is a lot that goes into Facebook and their algorithms and how your posts get posted into people's news feeds and how popular you are on Facebook. So you've got to be consistent and be showing up. And um, that picture on the side is a well. And if you've read the compound effect, you probably already know what that is. But <clears throat> basically, like, once you get going, you've got to just keep that well going. It's really hard in the beginning and you feel awkward and you feel weird about things that you're posting about, but once it starts flowing and the water starts coming out of the well, you just got to stick with it and you just got to keep going or else you have to start all over again. So that's why it's more important to just get something up on your social media. Don't leave it bare. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was an example I wanted to show you. Um, and I hear a lot of people talk about how, you know, they've been posting their, their fitness journey and nobody likes their picture. 
nobody cares, nobody's commenting, and building a following, it just takes time and consistency. And that top post is from 2011 when I became a coach. Uh, so I became a coach in May 2011, and that picture is from December of 2011. So I was a coach <coughs> already for half a year. That picture was actually from P90X, the original P90X from Yoga Day. And that is zero likes. Not one person could even click like on my picture. And then I had one uh, comment. So that was it. And like I told you in the beginning of the call, I had no reason to believe I could succeed at this. And even six months in, we're still nobody cared about my yoga pose, you know, and I still kept going. Now, this picture below, that was from uh, 2013, and it has 167 likes and 20 plus comments. Hold on. Uh, sorry. So, I continued to post. I didn't let the crickets bother me. I didn't let the crickets make me feel defeated and like a loser. Yes, I did feel like a loser actually, but I still showed up. I still kept on posting. My posts got better. My pictures got better. My following got better. And through time and consistency, I started to develop that following. So it happens over time, but you've got to be consistent. <clears throat> okay, so those are just some social media things, some tips that can help you as you're getting started. After you join as a coach, you have the Coach Training Academy, which is located in the back office in your Coach Online office, but also our team offers a Coach Basics. This is a group that is offered. We do it on Facebook and um, you, it's interactive, so I'm usually the one that runs it. There's other people in the team that run them as well, but it's a participation-driven coach training group, and you're going to be in there. It's almost like a challenge group for the business, and this is a group where you're going to learn and implement a lot of the skills of coaching. The goals of that group are to achieve Emerald Rank and Success Club. So this is just another tool that you have as a coach on our team. And if you have not done a Coach Basics group, then I would challenge you to talk to your coach and get in our next one. I don't care if you're a new coach or you've been a coach for a while. It doesn't matter. Just get plugged in if you want to, and we're more than happy to have you. <coughs> So this is a little bit of like the transgression of what you're going to be doing as a coach. So you're going to start off down there at the bottom as a new coach. And as coaches, we run challenge groups. We help people. Uh, basically, like here's a little um, script of what I say when I tell, when people say, so what do you do? Well, I work with people online to help them achieve their fitness goals. I'm always looking for entrepreneurs like me to join my team people who are looking for an opportunity to create more freedom in their lives. So you're going to start off down at, you know, as a new coach. And then um, after you've completed your coach basics and you're getting started, um, you may participate like as an apprentice coach. That's going to be where you are kind of co-leading a challenge group with your coach. So you're not having to do it alone. You kind of get the mechanics of posting <clears throat> in a group and how to engage people and those kind of things. And then you'll be on to leading your own challenge group. And while you're leading your own challenge group, you may be adding coaches into your team as well. And then from that point, then you will be the one that has an apprentice coach. You'll be the one that's taking in new coaches and helping them get started on their running their own challenge groups. So um, one of the last things that I wanted to leave you with is, hmm, I feel like there is a slide missing. But anyways, um, so our team is focused on integrity, <coughs> 
and bringing people up. We are solution oriented. We're not going to be focusing in on complaints or why things are the way they are. What you focus on expands. So if you sit around and say, nobody on my friends list wants to do 21 day fix. None of my friends want to do fitness. They all go to CrossFit. They're all runners or whatever. Those negative thoughts are going to continue to expand. What you focus on expands. So if you are focusing on positives, if you're focusing on, you know, the vision that you have for this business, the vision that you have for your future team, then that is what is going to expand. And if you've watched any of my other trainings, you'll see me talk about positive affirmations. And that's where it comes down to is, you know, making affirmations for your future team. Even if you've never signed a coach in your life and you've been a coach for years, I don't care. You can still do affirmations for the team that you want to create and the team that you want to be a leader for. So don't focus on the negatives. There's going to be negatives. This is a business. Just like any other business, there's going to be hard times. There's going to be times where you feel inadequate. That's okay. Don't focus on those things. Just move on. Know that it's normal and focus on what is good. Okay, last thing, I wanted to leave you with a few quotes. Being a successful coach is not a destination, it's a journey. You're not gonna just wake up one day and be successful. It's gonna be a journey of a lot of trial and error, a lot of fails, a lot of successes, a lot of joy, a lot of grief, a lot of not knowing what to say or do. It's just what it is. But the thing that's gonna be a difference maker for you to succeed in this business is the fact that you'll show up the next day. You have a crappy day, tomorrow's a new one that hasn't been written yet. So you show up that next morning with, with positive heart, ready to help people, not feeling the weight of a letdown or expectations. <clears throat> um, we as leaders in Fit Family Network, um, we have tons of, we have elite coaches, premier coaches, other Star Diamond coaches, and we want to see you excel. We want you to fly, we want you to be well equipped and feel supported and feel a part of this family. So a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of trial and error practice makes perfect and being a leader means you go first and sometimes you fail first. So those are just some things that have helped me in the business and just having that mindset. Um, I wanted to share some personal development books with you and one of them was The Compound Effect, which I had made reference on that previous slide. The other one is Fail Forward by John Maxwell. That book totally helped my mindset and helped me to know that it was okay to not have good days all the time and to fail and to learn and to learn from every single time that things don't go as you planned. So those are two books I would definitely put on your list. Um, I think that is all that I had to share with you guys tonight. Um, definitely what I want you to take away is to know that you are in a team that wants you to succeed, that has tools available to you. Don't get overwhelmed. Start with the basics. Start mastering those vital behaviors. They're called the three vital behaviors for a reason, and that's because that's where you need to focus. So inviting, being proof the product works, and your personal development. Check into the team page every day. Get on the team call every week. If you do those five things, I promise you, that you will see success as a coach. So thank you guys so much for being on. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me um, on Facebook or email jengreenberg at hotmail.com. And that's all I got for you. So thank you so much for being on tonight and I hope you have a great night. See ya.